Hello everyone from Zurich. Um, I'm Yılmaz Can Özgürt. I'm a PhD student in uh, Computer Science Department at ETH Zurich. And today um, I'm really excited to talk about our project, a deep Markov model for clickstream analytics uh, in online shopping. So uh, first, let me briefly introduce our problem. Um, the most recent statistics show that more than 97% of online shopping users are exiting the e-commerce websites with no purchase. And this is why some e-commerce websites are using machine learning models to detect when users are about to exit, and uh, that helps them to trigger some potential marketing interventions, uh, such as for some users, they can offer special coupons for their next sessions, or dynamically, the e-commerce websites can offer some uh, dynamic price promotions for the given session. So at the end of the day, uh, we have the research question of how can we detect the users who will exit with no purchase? And uh, for this, previous works have modeled the sequence of the page clicks in uh, mainly two different ways. So uh, the first approach was to use a variant of a recurrent neural network, such as any type of a by, uh, LSTM, uh, to capture the long-term dependence of the sequence of the page clicks. And uh, this leads to more of a accurate results uh, by making the prediction. However, uh, they do not provide any insight towards the, uh, the user behavior, which was found to be important by the marketing theory. So for this, on the other hand, uh, as a second uh, type of approach, some works use uh, very um, latent variable models, uh, such as a hidden Markov model or any specialized type of this, to capture the latent shopping phases of the users. Uh, the problem is uh, these models do not perform quite well when making the prediction task, but on the other hand, uh, they have the ability to identify uh, which latent shopping phase the user is going through. Uh, for instance, they can identify if the user is in browsing oriented phase, if the user is going through this purchase oriented uh, search in the session, or if uh, he or she is in flow or not in flow, etc. And for this general uh, problem framework, uh, here we are proposing uh, our attentive deep Markov model, which we call a uh, click stream DMM in this context for detecting the user exits without purchase. And more importantly, to the best of our knowledge, uh, this model is the first click stream model that uh, jointly learns both principles from the previous literature in a way that it learns both uh, the long-term dynamics of the page clicks with its attention mechanism, and also uh, it learns different latent shopping phases of the users uh, with its latent variable model. So uh, the experiments shown that our model consistently outperforms uh, the state-of-the-art algorithms. Uh, specifically, it improves the best area under the rock curve score by more than 11%. And uh, we had done our experiments based on the real-world data. So uh, we were provided uh, more than 26,000 online sessions, uh, which were given by our partner company, uh, Digitech Galaxus. Uh, basically, this company is the leading e-commerce platform here in Switzerland. So um, before diving into our model architecture, let's have a look at you know, what kind of data we have. So um, our data set comprises a set of online sessions where each session is represented by static and time series features. And uh, for the static features, we encode some user level information such as the gender, the age, the type of the account, uh, which is all denoted by the vector S. And on the other hand, uh, more importantly, we have time series features which encodes uh, the set of page clicks denoted by XM, and uh, they're associated timestamps showing exactly when this page click happened, uh, which was denoted by TM in the figures. Since we know uh, the timestamps of the pages, we further drive another time series feature we call uh, time spent on a page, uh, which is denoted by tau M in this context. And um, if you are into this literature, you may have seen dwell time instead, uh, but time spent on the page and dwell time uh, are corresponding to the same thing pretty much. So, of course, at the end of the day, we are performing a prediction task. So we have a binary label Y to indicate uh, whether or not the purchase happens uh, by the end of the session. So on the right side, uh, you can see our overall model architecture where each black rectangle represents a neural network uh, component of our big model. And uh, we have mainly five uh, neural network components. So the first three neural network components constitute the latent variable parts of our model. And as typical to latent variable setting, uh, we have a transition network, uh, which specifies the transition probability among these uh, consecutive latent variables, 
but different than most of the previous works, uh, we are also including the static features when uh, calculating this transition probability, uh, by which we also incorporate the user level heterogeneity into account. And uh, what do we mean by this? So for instance, if two different sessions from two different online users uh, reach to a similar or the same latent variable at some point, uh, the future path can still diverge uh, based on their different characteristics. And here, another thing to note is that um, here we are modeling the latent variables in a continuous space. So it's not discrete um, in the previous settings. And, um, and the thing is um, here, when I'm saying we are modeling transition probability, in fact, our neural network component uh, outputs the mean and the covariance matrix of the latent variable from the uh, future time step. So uh, we have two emission networks. Uh, we have a page emission network that gives us the probability of a page click uh, given the latent variable we have. And further, we have a time emission component uh, similarly gives us the probability of time spent on a given page uh, when we have the latent variable for that time step. Um, so now we know, you know how we use these latent variables for the generative setting in this latent variable perspective. And now let's have a look at how we use it for the prediction. So um, we have an attention network that allows our model to assign different importance weights to each latent variable uh, when we are making the uh, prediction. And basically as an output from this attention network, uh, we have an aggregated representation of the entire online session, um, which is denoted by Z tilde here in the figure. So this attention network uh, to a large extent, uh, similar to the other examples that you can find in the related literature of the attention networks, but uh, we have one main difference here. So in this model, um, basically we explicitly guide our model to give um, more attention weight towards the most recent latent variables. And uh, why are we doing this? Because the latent variables are uh, reflecting the latent shopping phases of the users. And according to the marketing theory, the user intention may evolve over the course of one session. And in order to make a reliable prediction, we want to be able to capture the the current, the most recent intention of the user. And how do we achieve this? Um, as typical to attention network setting, uh, for calculation of the attention weights, we are using a softmax function, which is in fact using the similarity between the query vector and the latent variable. But we are further dividing this course uh, by how much time has passed for uh, the latent variable of that time step. So you can see it by, we are dividing by T capital M minus TM. And uh, we are further taking the power of beta, where beta is a trainable parameter in the setting. So uh, we are giving our model a flexibility to choose the importance of this time difference. Uh, in other words, if towards the end of the training, uh, beta converges to zero, it means that uh, the time difference is not an important component in this model. And our model wants to treat each latent variables in an equal manner. Or uh, if the beta is significantly greater than zero, uh, then it means that we need to assign more weights to the most recent latent variables, and our model is basically leveraging this utility. So as the final uh, neural network component, we have a predictor network, uh, which is using this aggregated representation Z tilde in order to make this uh, purchase or uh, no purchase probability before the exit. So um, now we know how to use this latent variables for prediction and also in a latent variable manner. But the thing is, uh, since we have too many neural network components, in fact, the posterior distribution of the latent variables given the online session is computationally intractable. And this is why uh, we further develop a posterior approximation network here. Um, and this time the probabilities are represented by Q since it's an approximation, so it's not uh, symbolized by P just to make this difference. And uh, here we have two simplifications when we are calculating the uh, posterior distribution of the latent variables. So the first simplification is that uh, we are leveraging the chain rule of latent variables. So uh, we say the latent variables are conditionally independent from each other, given the latent variable from the previous time step. So ZMs are on the only condition on Z and minus ones. And the further simplification is that uh, we hypothesize that the previous latent variable uh, encapsulates enough information from the past. So we only need to condition on the future observations of the page clicks and the time spent on the page. And uh, you can see this, you can follow this by the uh, backward RNN. You can see this uh, red arrows, which is backward in time. 
So here, the hidden state of the RNN uh, encapsulates the feature information uh, contained by the observations of page clicks and the time spent on the page. And this information is combined with the latent variable from the previous time step and the static features uh, by which uh, we can get the probability posterior approximation of the uh, latent variable for the next time step. So now we have our one main model and also this posterior approximation. Of course, the next question becomes, uh, how can we train them together in an end-to-end -end fashion? And for this, uh, of course, we have a loss function. So um, our loss function has uh, two main components. Uh, the first component is a cross entropy loss, which is a typical setting for any sort of uh, a binary classification setting. And uh, further, our model tries to maximize the evidence lower bound. And just to give you a more intuition about like what it is, uh, the evidence lower bound is trying to um, given the posterior approximation of uh, the latent variables, it's trying to maximize the likelihood of the observations of uh, page sequences and time spent on the page. And further, it's trying to minimize the KL divergence between the posterior approximation and the prior distribution of the, of the latent variables. So now we know how to train the model. The only question remaining is, uh, how can we make this prediction in real time? And here is the recipe for this on the right side. So uh, we are sampling the latent variables uh, Z1 through Zm sequentially from our uh, posterior approximation network. Uh, re we repeat this above procedure like n different times because we have a sampling in the setting and where n is defined by the user. So this uh, set of latent variables uh, is processed sequentially uh, by the attention network and then the predictor network. So at the end of the day, our model produces n samples of the user exit uh, prediction without purchase uh, denoted by y hats. And we use its mean value for the estimate of uh, the probability of a user exit without purchase. And uh, now we know how to make this prediction. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some of our results. So uh, we have made uh, our evaluations uh, starting from six pages ahead to the user exit. Um, rather than doing this evaluation only at the last, ex uh, last page of the exits as the previous works had done. And we did this on purpose because in real time, uh, we may never know which page is the last page of an online sequence, online session, right? Um, you can think about it in this way. So a user can leave the website at any given time or he, he or she may just continue to click on the next pages at any time. So because of this, in real world deployments, uh, we need to have a robust and re reliable predictions uh, almost the entire time horizon. And this is sort of what we try to simulate here. And uh, on the tables for the left side, uh, you can see that uh, by both the array under the rock curve results and uh, array under the precision recall curve results, um, our model uh, consistently improves the scores of uh, the state of the art by uh, more than 11%. And on the right side, um, with the blue solid lines representing the performance of our model, you can see that uh, basically we outperform the state of the art approaches like at, uh, at any time step. And in order to motivate uh, some of our uh, design choices, we made a small ablation study. And uh, we approached this ablation study from uh, basically two main perspectives. So the first perspective is that, okay, we have a latent variable model, which is like a deep Markov model. So what would happen if we just didn't use any label information uh, within the model itself? So uh, how do we do this setting? Basically, uh, we remove the attention network and the predictive network from our uh, neural network. And instead, uh, we train two separate models for the online sessions for each class, which with purchase and without purchase. And for the evaluation uh, for a newly given online session, basically we evaluate this uh, session's likelihood under uh, two different models, basically two different hypotheses. So at the end, we made the uh, prediction by using a Bayesian uh, hypothesis testing, and which are denoted by mixture DMMs here. And as the second perspective, uh, we try to check the importance of uh, including incorporating this time spent on the page. And for this, we remove this uh, time emission network component to see uh, how the prediction results will change. And on the left side of the table, uh, you can see that uh, the both uh, design choices were correct. And also more importantly, uh, even though the latent variable part was also important, but they need to also include this uh, basic label information when making the prediction because it greatly uh, uh, boosts the performance. 
And yeah, you can see also the illustration on the right side. So uh, briefly conclude my words for this presentation. Uh, here I try to uh, briefly introduce our theory import model clickstream DMM, which combines the both uh, principles uh, from the previous literature. Uh, it captures the long-term dependence and different latent shopping phases of the users. And our performance is particularly effective uh, when we are making the uh, predictions multiple pages ahead, which is needed upon the deployment. Last but not least, our network is uh, generalizable to other settings of time series, such as the healthcare analytics, the churn prediction, or fraud prediction. Uh, with that, I conclude my presentation, and uh, real thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, we have some time for one or two quick questions. So, yeah, any Quick questions from the audience. Oh yeah, um, I do have one quick question. So, when you say uh, you know uh, generalizability, uh, I'm wondering have you done any you know experiments in your in this work? Uh, uh, any um, fundings? Yeah. Well, you mean like any other experiments in the other domains, for instance? Yeah. Um, uh, actually, we did. So uh, the thing is, we had a prior paper, in fact, uh, which was uh, for the ICU mortality prediction. And we were mm -hmm. using a similar setting almost, but of course, with different neural network components, depending on the need. Uh, but the thing is, in that case, then uh, you, you model the, instead of the latent shopping phases of the users, you are hypothesizing that our model captures the latent health states uh, of the patients there. And um, instead of basically predicting the user exit probability, there uh, you predict uh, uh, basically mortality uh, probability of a patient. And uh, again, that work also, we were lucky that previous works approached this from again, two main perspective, but they didn't combine this. And again, uh, we had a quite a performance boost in this setting too. So uh, yeah, when we say it's generalizable, actually we did this experiment and uh, we already had some results in that, in that case. I see, I see. cool. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>